joining me now to discuss the peace process is Palestinian writer and activist Maryam Barghouti. She's in Ramallah, as is Dr. Abdullah Abdullah. He's the head of the Palestinian Legislative Council's political committee. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. Maryam, let me start with you. In Paris, they've been talking about what to offer Israelis and Palestinians as incentives to start peace talks. Is that how far backwards we've gone? Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Is that how far backwards we've gone, the fact that they're talking about what incentives to offer Israelis and Palestinians about possible peace talks, rather than Israelis and Palestinians actually talking to each other? Um, I, I don't think it's as much as how far back we've gone, as much as this has been the case um, throughout. All these peace initiatives that are usually um, uh, supported or initiated by the international community stem from a very paternalistic view of Palestinians and Palestinian demands or the entire um, Palestinian Israeli milieu. So it's not us going backwards, it is how it's always been. And this is exactly why um, these talks in France being initiated by France are no different than that of Oslo or any other peace initiatives of the past. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, we've had Madrid, Oslo, Y River, Annapolis. Is Paris just going to be another colorful city added to a list of failed initiatives? Well, I think the start is different. Number one, the start says that there is an international community's responsibility for finding a solution based on international terms of reference. Security Council resolutions uh, relevant to the question, uh, agreement signed, international law, and the Arab Peace Initiative. That's one. Second, it, for the first time, a consensus once again is coming that without uh, creating a Palestinian state and ending completely the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territory, violence and uh, extremism will be the order of the day. And that is the cause for this extremism, which is opposite to the Israeli argument that extremism or violence is coming as a result of incitement by the Palestinians and the Palestinians themselves uh, being terrorists and carrying out terrorist acts. So thirdly, uh, there is an international consensus as well that uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis, of course, they have to negotiate with each other. The problem is not with negotiations, but the mode of negotiation is different this time. It's no more the hegemony of the Americans the, uh, who are uh, taking over the peace process. And in the past 22 years, being the strategic allies of Israel, they wouldn't even press Israel to implement what it agreed and signed on between uh, Israel and Palestine. Now the uh, terms of reference are different. The uh, overseeing the process uh, is different. And the end goal of this process is different. OK, is okay let's, let's get a response then to that. And sure. that all OK, let's get a response to that. So, Miriam, the terms of reference are different. The US is no longer a biased party at the table here. Dr. Abdullah is more optimistic than you are. How would you respond to that? Um, I think the, the optimism is, is an illusion. Basically, all these initiatives are always based on these visions um, and these hopes. But no one really takes into consideration the, the demands of the Palestinian. No one takes into consideration that after every initiative, um, settlements expand, violations by Israel expand. Um, it's, it's, what, what's happening is people are using hope and optimism as a war weapon against Palestinians. So you just feed a little hope in order to pacify masses, in order to suppress demands, um, and, and creating a, 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 an even bigger state of disillusionment and disenchantment. And I think to, to, to hang on to this optimism without really understanding that what's happening is, here is Palestinians are being forced to make more concessions, more compromises, that none of these initiatives actually speak of accountability, that I, I don't really understand what we're being optimistic so, about. So Mariam, you say more to, land seizure, more so, violations. Yeah, so you say to hang on to this optimism. You're implying that you know, Dr. Abdullah is part of, I guess, 
you're implying that he's part of the old generation. Do you think that it's time for that old generation to, to sort of step aside and, and allow you guys to speak? What, what would you say to him very directly now? Um, I think there's a huge generational gap between the Palestinian youth and the older generation. The older generation refuses to acknowledge its failure and at the same time keeps on criticizing youth movements who have been trying to pick up the pieces um, of what remains from, from failed attempts in the past. And it's not so much a step aside uh, as much as it is conceding these failures and trying to advise and um, um, help the youth rather than criticize and suppress youth movement or younger generations um, that have known nothing uh, beyond the Oslo agreement and the reality it has brought on from economic distress to, to um, more human rights violations to movement impediments uh, and, and the likes. Okay. So Do I, it's okay. not stepping aside, it's acknowledging your failures. Okay, Dr. Abdullah, acknowledge your failures, make space for the youth. Here's a young girl in Ramallah saying this to you. Your response, sir? First of all, when this revolution started in its recent uh, history, it never said it will accomplish its goals in uh, a certain time of years. It says it's a people's war, and that will take time until it changes the hemisphere altogether. And uh, anyone who criticizes the older generation must, at the same time, recognize that these, we, we don't take it by generations, in fact, those who started the revolution, they brought back Palestine on the map, politically and now geographically. It needs to be legally recognized and free and, and uh, sovereign. Uh, this is a long way to go, and we are not giving up our right. In fact, in fact, even this, the movement, the um, uh, movement that's carried out by the Palestinian activists, it. Uh, put the Palestine question back on the uh, top of the agenda of the international community. Irrespective of the fact that the uh, infighting in the region that is taking away from uh, the attention of the, uh, not only of the attention of the uh, international community, but the attention of our local Arab brethren. Right. Taking it away from that, now it is back on the, on the, uh, uh, forefront. It's it's back on the this, forefront. Uh, I want to put intention. something to you, Dr. Second, Abdullah. And this is if you allow me to this come is, in. If you allow me, just one okay. more Briefly one so. more sentence. Sure. And this puts puts on us the responsibility of how we carry out our battle, which just started. How to be prepared? How to reach out? How to change things as it has been changing from the Americans to the international community? Okay. Now I want to talk two-state solution, Dr. Abdullah. The French foreign minister said that a two-state solution is in serious danger. A, a cynic might say, has he been living under a rock for all these years? Of course it's been in danger for a long, long time. On the record, for the record, Dr. Abdullah, do you still believe in a two-state solution? Thus far, the two-state solution is the only solution that ends the occupation, establish the Palestinian state, is still possible if there is enough pressure from the international community for bo both the, Israel, the occupying power, Israel, is to abide by international law, to implement uh, relevant Security Council resolutions, and respect the agreement it signed. Israel has been carrying out all its crimes with impunity. Okay. And that's why <coughs> there was delay in achieving our rights. Okay, two-state solution for Dr. Abdullah. Maryam Barghouti, two-state solution, two sides living, two states living side by side equally. Is that what you want? Um, I, I mean, the, the fact that we're still hanging on to the state, the two-state solution shows how out of touch we are with the reality. 42% of West Bank lands are actually occupied by um, Israeli settlers. The two-state solution is completely um, implausible. It does not work. It, I can't believe that 
a lot of people are still hanging on to it. And if, if, if we are to say um, a two-state solution were to happen, which Israel would never agree to because the potential of Palestinian growth is always a complete no-no. You see it in, in the demands they make before initiatives, the demilitarization, the, any, any demand that basically suppresses Palestinian movement. But if there were a two-state solution to happen, um, what, where are the boundaries? What happens to the Palestinians um, that, that are still hanging on to the right of return? What happens to the Palestinians sure. within I mean, the, Israel? Um, and, holding and both sides Israeli will be negotiating citizenship. that, right, Maria? I want to ask you for the record, are you a one state? Negotiated then? Do you want, by whom? Do you want one state? I, I, in a utopic sense, I believe that eventually we'd like a one state. But before we can even delve into the one state, two state, we've been dragged into this debate that has further fragmented Palestinian demands and Palestinian will. What we first need to start speaking about is accountability. Before we can speak about any solution, the framework, the basis has to be paved. And that can't happen without accountability. That can't happen with a notion of justice um, occurring. Okay, so, if we uh, just keep so Miriam, speaking Israelis, about one state, sure. two state. It's Miriam, the Israelis are, are to be held to account for the occupation, for, for building illegal settlements. Uh, in terms of Palestinian accountability, who speaks for the Palestinians? Is it the Palestinian Authority? Is it a politician like Dr. Abdullah Abdullah? Is it Abu Mazen? Is it Hamas? Who speaks for the Palestinians? At this point, no one really speaks for the Palestinians. The Palestinian Authority is a structure that has transformed itself to serve the elites. We have a chairman um, that has expired his term who, who speaks on behalf of the Palestinians, who is going to this, uh, in, uh, accepting this France initiative on behalf of the Palestinians, when Palestinians here are, are not even very well aware of what's happening in France. It shows how out of touch um, everyone is with one another. If they're representing Palestinians, why aren't they including Palestinians in the diaspora and the decision making? They are serving themselves in these initiatives. Um, our leadership is serving itself, so Palestinians don't really have a representative. We've been fragmented and divided as a colonial tactic by Israeli, is Israel, so we don't have any leadership. Okay, we so don't have let's any let's representatives. Get a Dr. Abdullah, uh, what Maryam is listen, saying is that listen, what, what she's saying, let, exactly let me just finish, sir, let I, me finish I the know. question. Can I finish the question? What she's saying essentially is that, but let me, let me add to it. What she's essentially saying is that the status quo is insufferable for the vast majority of Palestinians, but that the status quo is not so bad for the Palestinian Authority. It's quite cushy for the Palestinian Authority. Do you find that res disrespectful? It, it's... It's unfortunate, let me uh, answer back, but it is unfortunate that Netanyahu will find someone from the Palestinian uh, community who speaks, who demolishes the history of Palestine, the uh, heritage of the Palestinian revolution, and the, the work that has been done in the past decades, and the scores that were uh, registered for uh, Palestine is one is trying to deny it altogether. I don't think he or she belongs to the Palestinian community because what has been achieved in the past almost 50 years of our recent uh, uprising against the occupation is recognized, is uh, registered in history. It is recognized on the ground and recognized with many countries of the world. We, uh, I don't think Netanyahu needs more voices to support him in saying there is no one speaks for the Palestinians. You, well, this is why Dr. Dalla, just to be clear, his, just to be clear, because is, we're running out of time. Is, so is, are you saying that Maryam? Saying, are you saying that Maryam, Maryam doesn't represent the Palestinians? That she's feeding into Netanyahu's argument? She, anyone, anyone who denies the history of the Palestinian uh, movement in the past half century doesn't belong to Palestinians. Maryam? Irrespective where his belt okay, I, I would, is. Okay, I would like to, to say something to that. Um, first of all, it is absurd, absurd to insinuate that I, I deny Palestinian history of resistance. On the contrary, it is honoring the lives did. that have been lost. Of course that, you did. That con Palestinian community that suffers under, under an authority that claims to represent them, but in fact has made situations worse for them. And the fact that you are insinuating my criticism 
of, of our representation is, uh, is me playing onto the Zionist narrative is completely absurd. It is because we want to debunk the Zionist narrative, it is because we want to end colonialism, that we are speaking out against um, this authority that is claiming to represent us, that is not bringing out our demands. It is making our reality a lot worse. It's acting as a proxy for, for the Israeli colonialism. And we need to be more vocal about that. We need to be unafraid about that. And we shouldn't be shamed by um, Palestinian legislators or, or authority for being critical of the way things are happening. If our voices are actually heard, then maybe, just maybe, we'd be able to move in, in a better path or a better direction for Palestinian um, dignity and more justice for, okay. for all of us. OK, I'd love to continue this discussion. But unfortunately, we are out of time. I've got a wrap. Mariam Barghouti and Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, thank you very much for joining us.